I've been a cab driver in Chicago around 12 years. I do the job like uh, 12 hours a day. Every day I work. Because I have four kids, I have to support my kids and my family. And all the time I thank this country because they bring me as refugees to this country. Every day I bless first my family and I say to my family, God bless America. God, no complaint, my friend. Okay. I never complain. Never complain? Never. I need to hear that. All the time, customer, they ask me, where are you from? I told them, if you know where I am from, I give you a free ride. I'm going to give you a clue. All right. Like, oh. like a cash cab, you know? Go ahead. I'm going to give you my name, my culture, my religion, my language. This is my name, Estefan B. Shalita. OK. That's my name. Got it. Our culture, we used to control the world. Our culture now doesn't exist. Religion, we are the first Christian. Language, we speak Aramaic. Now this is for a clue. You guess where I'm from, I give you a free ride. Come on. Yes. OK, it's going to be a big fair. How many culture. guesses do I get? Three strike, well, you are out. I don't out. know all the old names. Three so strike, you are out. This, this is, is my cash cat. OK, let me see your name again. Estefan. Estefan. The Spanish. No, 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 no. Spanish. That doesn't count as guess. Macedonian? You are you are close, but the, too far. The Moors. The Spanish no. Moors. Strike one. Strike one? Yes. Strike one? 50-50 or you want to call a friend? No, I'm gonna figure it out. Okay, go ahead. You're killing me. <laughs> don't kick this me is, out. No, 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 no. I need a ride. This I is know. a long ride, my it's friend. Okay. Wait, don't think Get out of my cab. Like cash cab. Get out of my cab. You give up? Yes, I give up. My name is Estefan Badel Shalita. I am from Iraq. I was born in Basra, south of Iraq. When I was a teenager back home, I was a neighborhood tough guy. My cousin, his name is Zaria Yunan. He was champion of Iraq in boxing. He asked me, you think you are tough? I say, why? He said, put the gloves and let me see if you are tough. I was sparred with him. I was giving him a hard time. He said, hey, you are good. He said, I'm going to introduce you to the department of the sport, Navy sport. When I turned 18, I was professional boxer and professional soccer goalkeeper in the first team in Iraq. I used to skip school and go, shh, go to the gym, you know, watch him fight. He was young, tall, skinny, handsome. Oh, goalkeeper, boxer, everybody knew him. And when you, somebody say something, oh, you, you Steve's nephew. Oh, yeah, we know he's champion, you Steve, you know. It makes you feel good, you know, especially when somebody related to you and you see him knock out people and you'll be like, yeah, he's my uncle, yeah. We were going, me and my uncle, youngest uncle and him. He had a fight, so we all preparing, you know. He's like everybody, he was the favorite. Like this first round, in like 10, 15 seconds, poof, and he went down. And we were like, oh, get up, get up. Man, my uncle got up. His eyes was like tipped off. He was just breathing from his nose. After that, for three rounds, he beat him up so much, the whole stadium was screaming. Bus shuf, sehel sarchis. That means look, uh, observe, and look. Sehel, the guy, his name is Hail. He become punching bag. <laughs> I was the light heavyweight champion of Iraq. 
from 68 to 76. And all the media, every time, all the media boxing, they pick my name to represent Iraqi national team. They send me to the training camp five times. Five times they send me home. I don't know why. Some friends, they told me, maybe because you are a Christian or maybe you are not in the Ba'ath party. They took my father for eight months. And my father with the Ba'ath party. They took him for eight months. They put him in, in, in uh, this, they tortured him. And then after that, really saying, we sorry. And my father quit the Ba'ath party. He gathered all the guys in the family and say, this is not our country. This is never gonna be ours. My uncle gathered his stuff. My father got him the ticket and he say, you don't say I'm taking off, say I'm going on vacation. Government of Iraq, if they know I'm gonna leave and not come back, they put me in jail. My family, they told me, Estefan, you're still young. We want you to be champion. We want you to be something in your life. Leave Iraq. I left Iraq 1976. I ran away from Iraq to Greece. I left behind four brothers and four sisters, my mother and my father. But I was trying to be like any professional boxer, any champion. They don't look behind, just look forward. When I was in Greece, I was practice with the team Panathinaikos Club. They told me, hey, we need you to come with us every day to practice with us. The trainer of the national team, he told me, Estefan, if you want, we can give you the opportunity to represent Greek national team. I told them, I can represent your country. I was too tired, too men mentally and physically, because mentally I left my family home and I ran away from my country. And physically, as I was working 12 hours, 10 hours a day in the factory, I was working under the table just to survive. At that time, when I was working, I met beautiful girl. I first met him, I was so nervous. I don't want to talk to him. She gave me uh, like uh, angry face. Then he talked to my friends, go talk to Anna, I, I love her, you know. My friend, Greek lady, she said, oh, he's a nice guy, he's a handsome guy. Why you don't want to talk to him? I said, no, I don't want to talk to him. I want to go to America because my brother, he was here. I don't want to get married here. I don't want to engage here. And she told me, you're not going to find a guy in America like Stefan. Then I changed my mind. <laughs> I talked to him. I asked her, where are you from? She told me I'm from Iraq. Oh, I, I told, her, told her, I'm from Iraq too. She said, I'm from the north. I told her, I'm from the south. She told me, you're gonna stay in Greece? I said, no, I'm applying for political refugees. He have cousin in Australia. They make, I think they make his paper, but he was in love and he, he don't wanna go to Australia. I told her, you go to America, I'm gonna follow you. If you, if you go to America, I come to America too. Start boxing here. I met Ernie Terrell, he's champion of the world. And Ernie Terrell, he gave me seven fight. And I had five win, two lose. His face was <laughs> swelling, you know, bruising, and stiff. That's it, you have to stop. You have to stop. My son born in 1980, I stopped. Uh, 
but I think the fact that he he comes home from like a 14 hour day, I mean, just. Happy, happy yeah, to see us, happy, happy to be home, happy to be alive, happy to have a job. From what I hear, he's always been a happy, a happy chippa, a happy camper. You know, I think yeah. he's always been like that. I think that's what keeps us going. Him being so positive, because he's had such a hard, a difficult life, I think he overlooks the little things that would bother anybody. He just thinks about his family, wanting to see them, and, and that just brings him joy. His job brings him joy. Talking to so many people about his life brings him joy. The customer, I told them, you know what? I have $4 million. Oh, they told me, how, how, how you have $4 million? I told them, listen to this. I have four kids born here. That's my fortune. That's my $4 million. You never know what's, what's, what's going to be. And, and that's, that's my kids. My parents haven't seen their parents in 30 some years. So my mom always told us when we were kids, like, you're my mom, you're my dad. Or the way I loved my mom and dad, that's how much I love you. I, I look the picture and say, you know, I come from the big family. We were six sisters and one brother. It was a big family, it was a nice life, you know, all together. Going to airplane to leave Iraq, I see my sister, and that's it, it was the last time in my life I didn't see her. Then I went to Greece. Then after that, I didn't see, I didn't see my family. We talk each other, but I didn't see my family. I miss everybody. I miss my sister, I miss my mom, I miss my dad. I miss all of them, but I can't do nothing. My parents die, I don't see them. His parents die, he didn't see them. Yeah. And I can't, I can't go to see their, their, their funeral because I'm scared. Everybody's, I yeah. Back, they, they put me in jail or they kill me. Yeah. My sister, she went to my village, only rock, no, no houses, no, nothing. They bombed church. I was screaming, yeah. crying. Yeah. Everybody in church, just. Saddam's time, nobody can do that. That's, that's what, what, what they say. Yeah. They say, we used to have Saddam, one Saddam. Now we have 40 Saddam. We need just peace in that country. Everywhere, north, south, east, west, everywhere. I didn't think I was going to Greece and find somebody and love and engage. I never think about that. I said, this, I want to get out from the Iraq. Something happened was a gift for both of us. Yes, that's a gift. Yes, yeah, right. for both of us. Sometimes I think, what if my dad never took that step to change his flight ticket and be like, I'm coming with you, sweetheart. I'm coming with you, honey. If I didn't have my dad, like, I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> but thinking of like having a different father than who I have now <laughs> would be devastating, I think. It would be heartbreaking. 
Thanks. My husband, he was champion. And I want to raise my kids gentlemen like my husband. He was gentleman, he was champion. I want my kids to be just like him. We know each other from almost 36 years, right? Yeah, 37. 37. Almost, yeah. We, we got, we're still in love, right? Oh yeah, I love <laughs> you. I love you more in my life. I love you too. Honey. Hi, Hi.